take you out to Pennsylvania right now, talking about the escaped prisoner there in Warren, Pennsylvania. Let's listen into these remarks here on Live Now from Fox. Reevaluating that position. We ask that people nationwide familiarize themselves with the picture of Michael Burham, Burham rather, and please contact us if you believe you may have seen him. Burham is considered to be armed and dangerous, and we ask anyone who thinks they may see him not to approach, but again to call us. Anyone with information is asked to contact Pennsylvania State Police Warren Station at 814-728-3600. As I've said, all tips are being investigated regardless of where they are located. The United States Marshals have offered a $7,500 reward and Warren County Crime Stoppers has offered a $2,000 reward for information leading to his apprehension. This remains a very fluid and active investigation which is being conducted in conjunction with more than one dozen of our federal, state, and local law enforcement partners and we're adding to those numbers uh, nearly on an hourly basis. The Pennsylvania State Police and our partners are utilizing all appropriate resources and we are committed to the safety of the residents of the Warren County area and those beyond. Again, anyone with information or concerns is asked to contact Pennsylvania State Police Warren at 814-728-3600. I would be happy to take any questions you might have at this time. You mentioned uh, Burham having military experience. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, I, I don't want to go into everything about his military record that we're aware of. I will tell you that uh, his experience uh, is as a reservist as opposed to an active duty member of the, um, of the Army Reserves. Is there any indication of which direction he was headed? Uh, I don't want to speculate on what we have gleaned from our investigation, but again, any piece of information like that that, uh, that points us in a certain direction we are following up on. It's now been about three days. Is it forcing you to cast a wider net? How far could you have possibly gotten? Well, of course, uh, it depends uh, if he, what assistance he may have had, and it depends whether he would have obtained a vehicle, how far he could have gotten. But, uh, but at this point, again, as I, as I said in my remarks, uh, we have no reason to believe that he has gotten out of the area. We are casting that wider net that you alluded to. Uh, the original search really focused in the city of Warren in the hours following the escape. Very quickly, we expanded out, and, uh, and we continue to expand that circumference further out, again, based on uh, information that we develop. Sir, is there any reason to believe that someone may be helping him at this point? I think that's entirely possible that he may be getting some assistance. Did you find any articles of his clothing or his crocs at the campsite? Uh, I don't want to comment on what we have found at those sites. Again, it's part of an ongoing investigation. How, how much... Does the fact that someone may be assisting him, does that make your decision to, to kind of broaden the search area? Well, again, uh, uh, everything that we're doing is based on information that we've developed. Uh, and so when I say that there may be uh, uh, one or more individuals assisting him, that's uh, part of that ongoing investigation. Certainly, if they are, they're putting themselves in legal peril. We will prosecute them. And, uh, and, and again, we're doing everything in our power at this point to locate him and also to identify anyone who may offer him any kind of assistance. Is there any chance he's altered his appearance significantly at this point, shaved his head, dyed his hair, anything like that? Any indication? Uh, I, I wouldn't be in a position to pr uh, predict what he may or may not have done to his appearance. Um, uh, again, what I would say is uh, we're trying to get his face out there. Uh, someone uh, shouldn't necessarily be driven just by a hairstyle or a beard or that type of thing. Uh, it's, it, it, we're, we're, there's no way to tell what he may or may not have done to alter his appearance. You previously said that it's rough terrain. Some of the areas need to be searched by foot. Are you guys using infrared technology? We're using a lot of different types of technology, including infrared, yes. Does the fact that this case has gone national in terms of its exposure, does that help the investigation, potentially hinder it? How do you... Well, I think it helps it. Uh, again, uh, in the event that he is able to make it out of this area, that's why we're asking people to familiarize themselves with his photo. Uh, we want to make sure that someone can recognize him and promptly contacts law enforcement. You know, and again, uh, depending on what they observe, 
when I'm asking them to call Pennsylvania State Police, if there's something of an immediate nature, a criminal nature, certainly you can call 911 and advise them of what's occurring, and, and they will get in contact with us. Certainly you're leaning on the public's assistance to, to track this guy down, but also, I mean, is there, is there a message to them as you know, many of these residents are, are kind of concerned about you know, this guy potentially being in their backyard? Well, we ask the residents to be vigilant and report anything suspicious to us. We also ask them to secure their homes, their cars, their businesses, and, uh, and not allow him easy access to supplies or to a vehicle to allow him to escape the area. Do you think the longer it goes, the more desperate he becomes and, and people are actually in more harm's way? It's hard to say what uh, his mindset is, whether anyone is in additional danger. I do think that... Uh, not only him, but anyone in this situation becomes more desperate over time. And uh, uh, we plan to use that to our advantage. We're pushing hard uh, to try and locate him. If he's here, if he's out here in the woods, we'll continue to push hard. He's not going to be able to get a lot of rest. We're going to push hard until we find him. Um, how helpful have you found uh, the, the tips and such uh, from, from the public? Oh, I, th I think they're certainly very helpful. And again, uh, we encourage anyone to call with anything uh, that they think might be helpful. We don't expect them to investigate or run it down to confirm that it is. Uh, at, at, but we are anxious to hear from the public about anything that they think might help us out. At this point in your search, how far have you all gone into the Allegheny National Forest? Uh, we've gone uh, a significant distance. Again, I, I don't want to necessarily uh, uh, give you the exact locations or the distances that we've searched, but... Uh, uh, we are uh, traveling well into the National Forest, and again, we're using a lot of technology to assist us in that. Does the guidance to the public remain situational awareness? No. It does. Okay. And I would also say that, you know, we have a lot of uh, tourists in the area. Certainly, we're just coming off a weekend now, but this is an area that uh, people from outside of, uh, of the Warren area come to uh, for hiking and uh, kayaking, canoeing, those kinds of things. Uh, and, and, and again, that's why we've tried to be very open, transparent, and, and keep this somewhat high profile so that all of those folks also know what we're uh, dealing with here and, and that they're vigilant as well. When you do capture him, are you going to bring him back to the county jail? Uh, that has not been determined yet. So what will happen is it just depends where he's captured. There are rules that pertain to how you arraign them and then what happens to them uh, uh, from there. But there would be a discussion and decisions made by uh, uh, certainly the uh, district attorney's office. And uh, uh, we would have, uh, I'm sure, uh, an opportunity to uh, discuss that with them and, uh, and a decision made at that time. But our focus right now is on capturing him. There's been some significant rain in the surrounding areas. I'm curious, I mean, as it kind of moves this way, how does that impact search efforts? Well, certainly it can make search efforts a little more difficult. On the other hand, it can certainly make him a little more uncomfortable if he is out there, uh, depending on the circumstances he's in. So uh, it won't stop our search efforts at all. Uh, it just adds additional challenges. And the, the goal, I'm assuming, at this point, when you do locate him, is to, to bring him in without you know, having to use force, if need be. Our goal is to take him back into custody and return him uh, to jail to face the court system. Um, what level of force has to be used to do that is really up to him. Any indication that he might be armed? Uh, his past behavior leads us to believe that he would certainly seek to be armed, and so we are considering that uh, it is likely that he has uh, been able to get armed. The fact that, that we've found... Uh, stockpiles of, uh, of supplies and things. Um, and again, with his past uh, behavior, there's every reason to believe that uh, that may have occurred or will at where some point. Where did you find the stockpiles at? Uh, we're not uh, disclosing where exactly those were. Are you, and forgive me if I realize that I was late, but can you give details about what were these stockpiles? Uh, no, I just uh, I indicated that we have found uh, stockpiles of supplies or campsites that we believe are associated with Michael Burham. Um, we're not disclosing at this point where they are or what uh, specifically was there, but uh, it, it uh, supports what we've said all along that uh, he's prepared as a survivalist in the past and uh, uh, tried to be uh, ready, if you will, um, to spend time in the woods. 
Does that also support the suggestion that he's still in the general Warren area? Uh, I think uh, that's certainly a piece of the information that we're considering. Uh, certainly isn't conclusive. Uh, those campsites can exist, and you could still leave uh, shortly after using them. But uh, but certainly one of the factors in our assessment. Uh, we know that he is a suspect in the investigation into Kayla, the homicide of Kayla Hodgkin. Can you comment on whether her family has been relocated to a different area? If, you know, their safety has been secured while he's on the loose. Yes, when, while that investigation is not under the purview of the Pennsylvania State Police, what I can tell you is we've been in contact with law enforcement in New York. We have a presence of law enforcement from New York here at our command post, and so we are regularly sharing information with them. Uh, we are also um, uh, addressing any uh, threat information or anything and, and providing that. Uh, I can tell you that steps have been taken to ensure their safety. Thank you very much. We appreciate uh, your help in getting this word out. Can I have a question again? Sorry. Um, yes. Do you think he's armed at this point, or have there been any weapons or camp thefts at all? Or, I'm sorry, what was the last camp part? Camp thefts at all in the area? Um, we, as I was telling them, we do believe that it's entirely possible, based on his previous actions, that uh, he typically does seek to arm himself. We believe that it's entirely possible at this point uh, that that has occurred and we are treating him as uh, likely armed and certainly a dangerous individual. Thank you all. You're just listening in there to officials in Pennsylvania providing this update here on Alive and Now from Fox. I am Andy Mack, thank you so much for following us here as we continue on. I wanna give you a, a look at the mugshot one more time of this individual, this survivalist inmate escapee. They said uh, he is dangerous. Michael Burham escaped from jail in Warring, Pennsylvania, climbing on an exercise equipment and using bed sheets to escape through a window. Now authorities say they have found stockpiles of supplies, potentially weapons, as in his past, he has been a survivalist, meaning that he has the ability to spend some time away from society, potentially in the woods, uh, without utilities and whatnot. So certainly something we'll continue to follow here as the search continues there in Pennsylvania. I'm Andy Mack. Let's slide away for a quick two-minute break.